The house seemed to watch her, its dark windows like lidless eyes boring into her soul. Samantha Ray shuddered, pulling her coat tighter as she stepped out of her car and onto the cracked pavement of the driveway. Dead leaves skittered across her path, whispering secrets of the past. It had been years since she'd set foot in her family's ancestral home, years since that fateful night that had shattered her world and sent her running. Running from the memories. From the truth. And now, here she was again, drawn back by a desperate plea she couldn't ignore. Please, Sam. Her brother Michael had begged over the phone, voice tight with fear. There's something wrong with this house. Lila won't admit it, but I know she senses it too. You're the only one who can help us. Samantha had hesitated. Her relationship with her sister-in-law Lila had always been tenuous at best. The other woman's icy resentment a palpable thing. But in the end, she couldn't refuse her brother. Not when real terror lurked beneath his words. She was a parapsychologist, after all. And this house... This house had been the birthplace of her fascination with the otherworldly, the unexplained, the scene of her deepest pain and her darkest secrets. Stealing herself, Samantha marched up the crumbling stone steps to the weathered front door. It loomed before her like the gaping maw of some great beast, ready to swallow her whole. She raised a hand to knock, but before her knuckles could make contact, the door swung open with an ominous creak. And there, silhouetted against the gloom of the foyer, stood a figure that made Samantha's breath catch in her throat. Tall and lean, with raven hair and eyes like molten silver, he regarded her with an intensity that sent shivers down her spine. Hello, Samantha, he said, voice low and dark as sin. I've been waiting for you. As Samantha stared into those fathomless eyes, she felt the tendrils of the past tighten around her once again, dragging her down into the shadows. And she knew, with chilling certainty, that the true horror was only just beginning. The great hall of Ray House stretched out before Samantha, all dark wood and faded grandeur. Portraits of stern-faced ancestors loomed from the walls, their eyes seeming to follow her every move. She suppressed a shiver, trying to ignore the icy fingers of dread crawling up her spine. Samantha, dot I. Michael emerged from the shadows, his face drawn and pale. He enveloped her in a hug that was equal parts relief and desperation. Thank God you're here. She returned the embrace, feeling the tension in his shoulders, the racing of his heart. Of course. I came as soon as I could. Drawing back, she searched his haunted eyes. What's happening, Michael? What's got you so scared? He opened his mouth to reply. But before he could utter a word, a sharp voice cut through the air like a knife. Well, well. If it isn't the prodigal sister, returned at last. Samantha turned to see Lila descending the grand staircase, her movements precise and deliberate, like a predator stalking its prey. She was as coldly beautiful as ever, with porcelain skin and eyes like chips of ice. Lila. Samantha inclined her head, keeping her tone carefully neutral. It's been a long time. Not long enough, Lila retorted, coming to a stop beside Michael. She laid a possessive hand on his arm, her blood-red nails a stark contrast against his white shirt. I told you we don't need her, darling. We can handle this ourselves. Michael shook his head, a vein pulsing in his temple. No, we can't. You haven't seen what I've seen, Lila. The shadows, the whispers in the night. He turned pleading eyes to Samantha. I'm losing my mind, Sam. I need your help. Samantha's heart clenched at the raw fear in his voice. Her brother had always been the strong one, the rock of the family. To see him reduced to this. I'm here now, she soothed, placing a comforting hand on his shoulder. We'll get to the bottom of this, I promise. Lila's lip curled in disdain. Yes, because you're the expert, aren't you? The great Samantha Ray, ghost hunter extraordinaire dot I. She leaned in close, her perfume cloying and sweet. But some secrets are better left buried. You of all people should know that. Before Samantha could respond, a deep, resonant voice echoed through the hall. Secrets have a way of clawing their way to the surface, no matter how deep you bury them. 
The man from the doorway stepped forward, his silver eyes glinting in the dim light. Samantha's pulse quickened at the sight of him, some primal part of her recognizing a kindred spirit. A fellow wanderer in the dark. And who might you be? Lila demanded, her tone dripping with venom. Damien Blackwood, he replied, sketching a mocking bow. Historian, researcher, and expert on all things. Peculiar. He arrived shortly after we moved in, Michael explained, running a hand through his hair. Said he was writing a book on the house's history. That he could help us understand the strange things happening here. Lila snorted. As if we need another meddler poking around in our business. But Samantha barely heard her. She was too transfixed by Damien, by the aura of mystery and danger that clung to him like a second skin. And when his eyes met hers, she felt a jolt of electricity arc between them, a connection that went beyond the physical. Well then, she said, tearing her gaze away with effort. Shall we get started? The sooner we unravel this mystery, the better. As she followed Michael deeper into the house, Lila's icy glare boring into her back and Damien's presence burning at her side. Samantha couldn't shake the feeling that they were walking into the very heart of darkness. That the secrets they unearthed might very well be the death of them all. But there was no turning back now. The house had its hooks in her, just as surely as the ghosts of her past. And as the shadows closed in around them, Samantha knew that this time, there would be no escape. The shadows seemed to lengthen as they delved deeper into the heart of Ray House, the air growing thick and oppressive. Samantha's skin prickled with unease, every instinct screaming that they were not alone. Michael led them to the library, a cavernous room lined with towering shelves of ancient tomes. A fire crackled in the hearth, casting eerie shadows on the walls. This is where it started, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. The whispers, the faces in the flames. Samantha stepped closer to the fireplace, drawn by some unseen force. As she stared into the flickering depths, images began to take shape. A woman in a billowing white gown, her face obscured by a veil of dark hair. A man, his features twisted in rage, hands reaching out as if to throttle the very air. Victoria and Nathaniel Blackthorne, Damien murmured, suddenly at her side. The original owners of this house. Their story is one of love, betrayal, and unimaginable darkness. Samantha turned to him, pulse racing at his proximity. What happened to them? Legend has it that Victoria fell in love with another man, a penniless artist named Roderick Ashton. When Nathaniel discovered their affair, he flew into a jealous rage. He killed Roderick in cold blood, right in this very room. A chill ran down Samantha's spine. And Victoria? Damien's eyes met hers, silver and haunted. She took her own life, driven mad with grief. But not before she cursed Nathaniel and all his descendants. Vowed that they would never know peace, that the house would be their eternal prison. Behind them, Lila scoffed. Spare us the ghost stories. We have real problems to deal with. But Samantha barely heard her. Her gaze was locked with Damien's, the rest of the world falling away. In that moment she saw her own pain reflected back at her, her own scars and secrets. The spell was broken by a sudden violent slamming of doors. The bookshelves rattled, volumes tumbling to the floor in a flurry of dust and torn pages. A bone-chilling wind tore through the room, extinguishing the fire with a hiss. Michael cried out clutching at his head. It's happening again. Can't you feel it? The hatred. The rage. Samantha rushed to his side, gripping his shoulders. Fight it, Michael. Don't let it in. But even as she spoke, a figure began to take shape in the shadows. A man, tall and gaunt, his eyes burning with a madness that was all too human. Nathaniel Blackthorne, just as Damien had described him, Lila screamed, backing away in terror. But Samantha stood her ground, even as every cell in her body urged her to run. What do you want? She demanded, her voice sounding small and insignificant in the face of such malevolence. Nathaniel's lips twisted in a cruel mockery of a smile. I want what is mine. I want the blood of the betrayers, the screams of the damned. I want my revenge. 
With a roar like a thousand tortured souls he lunged forward, spectral hands outstretched. Samantha braced herself for the icy touch of death. But it never came. Instead, a blinding light filled the room, emanating from the amulet at Damien's throat. He stood before her, a living shield, his face a mask of determination. Not today, Nathaniel, he growled. Not ever again. The ghost recoiled, its form dissolving into mist. But as it faded, Samantha heard its voice, a sibilant whisper in her mind. You cannot protect her forever, Damien Blackwood. The truth will out. And when it does, she will be mine. I. With a final chilling laugh, Nathaniel vanished, leaving only a pall of dread in his wake. Samantha sagged against Damien, her strength fleeing. He caught her, his arms strong and sure around her waist. Who are you? She whispered, searching his face for answers. How did you do that? But before he could respond, Michael's panicked voice cut through the air. Leela! Lila, where are you? They turned to see the library empty, the door swinging on its hinges. Lila was gone, vanished into the bowels of the house. And as they stood there, hearts racing and minds reeling, Samantha knew that the true horror was only just beginning to unfold. That the secrets buried within these walls would stop at nothing to claim their due. Even if it meant tearing apart everything she held dear. The search for Lila led them deep into the labyrinth heart of Ray House, down twisting corridors and through dust-choked rooms that hadn't seen life in decades. Samantha's nerves were stretched taut, every creak of the floorboards, every whisper of the wind setting her teeth on edge. Michael was a man possessed, calling out his wife's name with increasing desperation. But only silence answered him, thick and heavy with unspoken secrets. Damien stayed close to Samantha, his presence a solid anchor in the swirling madness. She found herself drawing strength from him, from the steady resolve in his silver eyes. At last, they came to a door at the end of a long, narrow hallway. It was old, the wood warped and blackened with age. And carved into its surface was a symbol that made Samantha's blood run cold. The raven's eye, Damien murmured, tracing the intricate lines with a finger, an ancient sigil of dark magic and twisted souls. Michael pounded on the door, his voice raw with fear. Lila! Lila, are you in there? For a moment, there was only silence. Then, a sound that chilled Samantha to the bone. A high, keening wail, full of agony and despair. Samantha pushed past Michael, grasping the handle with trembling hands. The door swung open, revealing a scene out of a nightmare. The room was bare, save for a single, solitary chair in the center. And in that chair sat Lila, her head thrown back, her mouth open in a silent scream. Black veins pulsed beneath her skin, writhing like serpents. And her eyes, her eyes were pools of inky darkness, soulless and empty. Lila, no! Michael rushed forward, but an unseen force flung him back, slamming him into the wall. Samantha stood frozen, horror and revulsion rooting her to the spot. She had seen possession before, had even experienced the icy touch of a malevolent spirit. But this, this was something else entirely. Damien stepped forward, his amulet glowing with an ethereal light. He began to chant in a language, Samantha didn't recognize the words, harsh and guttural. Lila's body convulsed, her head snapping towards him with an audible crack. You dare challenge me, Blackwood? The voice that spilled from her lips was not her own, but rather a chorus of tortured whispers. You, who bear the blood of the betrayer? One. Damien's jaw clenched, but he didn't falter. I bear many burdens, spirit. But I will not let you claim another innocent soul. The thing inside Lila laughed a sound like shattering glass. Innocent? This one is far from innocent. She reeks of envy, of pride, of a darkness that rivals my own. Its gaze slid to Samantha, sharp and penetrating. And you, Samantha Ray, you who flee from your own shadow, how long before your secrets consume you whole? 
wand. Samantha's heart stuttered, the words striking a chord deep within her. Secrets, yes. Secrets she had buried so deep, she had almost convinced herself they didn't exist. But they did. And now, in the face of this ancient evil, they rose to the surface like bloated corpses, rotten and fetid. My secrets are my own, she whispered, her voice shaking. And they hold no power over me. Not anymore. The spirit sneered. They shall see, child of the ravens. We shall see. Why me? And I me. With a final unearthly shriek, it tore free of Lila's body, leaving her to slump forward like a marionette with its strings cut. Michael gathered her into his arms, tears streaming down his face. Damien sagged, his skin ashen. Samantha caught him before he could fall, alarmed at the weakening pulse beneath her fingers. Damien, what's happening? What's wrong? He met her gaze, his eyes filled with a sorrow that broke her heart. The spirit was right. I am a Blackwood, a descendant of Roderick Ashton. The curse is mine to bear, just as it is yours. Samantha reeled, the revelation hitting her like a physical blow. A Blackwood? A betrayer. But even as her mind struggled to process it, her heart knew the truth. Knew that the connection between them was more than mere chance or circumstance. It was destiny woven in blood and shadow. And as Damien's eyes fluttered shut, as Michael's sobs echoed off the bare walls, Samantha felt the threads of that destiny tighten around her, suffocating in their intensity. The raven's eye seemed to mock her from the door, a promise of darker things to come. And Samantha knew, with chilling certainty, that the final act of this twisted play was about to begin, an act written in the blood of the past and the tears of the present. The revelations hung heavy in the air, Samantha helped Damien to his feet, Michael cradling a catatonic Lila in his arms. The house seemed to pulse around them, the shadows deepening, the very walls breathing with malevolent life. We need to end this, Samantha said, her voice steady despite the turmoil raging inside her. We need to break the curse, once and for all. Damien nodded, his jaw set with grim determination. The answer lies in the past, in the tragic story of Victoria and Roderick. He met her gaze, silver eyes burning with intensity, and in the secrets that bind our bloodlines together. Samantha's heart stuttered at the unspoken implication. The connection between them, the inexplicable pull she had felt from the moment they met, could it be more than mere chance? Could it be the echoes of a love story long buried, reaching out across the ages? She pushed the thought aside, focusing on the task at hand. Where do we start? The portrait, Michael said, his voice hollow with grief. The one in the attic? It's been in the family for generations, passed down from Nathaniel himself. Samantha remembered the painting, a masterpiece of dark beauty and twisted desire. A woman with hair like flames and eyes like emerald daggers, forever frozen in a moment of exquisite agony. Victoria Blackthorne, captured on canvas by the hand of her forbidden lover. They made their way to the attic, the stairs creaking beneath their feet like the bones of the long dead. The air grew thick with the scent of dust and decay, a cloying sweetness that coated the back of Samantha's throat. And there, in the center of the room, stood the portrait, as vivid and haunting as the day it was painted. Victoria's eyes seemed to follow them, a silent accusation in their jade depths. Damien approached the painting, his fingers hovering over the gilded frame. The key to breaking the curse lies within, he murmured almost to himself. A final message from Roderick, hidden in the brush strokes. Samantha joined him, her heart pounding a frantic tattoo against her ribs. As she stared into Victoria's face, a face so like her own, a memory surfaced, sharp and painful. A moment from her past, long buried but never forgotten. The night her father died, his body broken on the rocks beneath the cliffs of their family home. The night her mother, mad with grief, had taken her own life, leaving Samantha alone in a world of shadows and secrets. The night the curse had claimed its first victim in generations.
Tears blurred her vision, the weight of her own tragic history pressing down on her like a physical force. But as she blinked them away, she saw it. The key, just as Damien had said. There, in the corner of the painting, almost lost in the swirling darkness, was a series of numbers and symbols. A code, waiting to be deciphered. The crypt, Damien breathed, realization dawning in his eyes. Roderick's final resting place. That's where we'll find the answers we seek. Samantha nodded, a newfound resolve burning through her veins. Then that's where we'll go. Tonight, under the blood moon. They prepared in silence, the weight of their shared destiny heavy on their shoulders. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in shades of crimson and gold, they made their way to the ancient cemetery on the outskirts of the estate. The crypt rose before them, a monument to love and betrayal carved from obsidian stone. The raven's eye stared down at them from the entrance, a silent guardian of the secrets within. With trembling hands, Samantha unlocked the door, the key turning with a sound like the last gasp of a dying man. The air inside was stale and thick, heavy with the scent of old bones and older regrets. And there, in the center of the chamber, lay a sarcophagus, its surface worn smooth by the passage of time. On its lid, picked out in gold leaf, was a single name. Roderick Ashton. Dalalawai. Damien ran his fingers over the letters, his face a mask of sorrow and resolve. The final piece of the puzzle, he said softly. The truth that will set us all free. Together, they heaved the lid aside, stone grating against stone with a sound like a thousand screaming souls. And there, nestled in the velvet lining, was a leather-bound journal, its pages yellowed with age. Samantha lifted it with shaking hands, her heart in her throat. As she opened it to the first page, Roderick's words seemed to leap out at her, a voice from beyond the grave. My beloved Victoria, if you are reading this then I am gone and the curse has claimed its final victim. Know that I never meant for any of this to happen, that I loved you with a passion that defied reason and shattered fate. Nay, but our love was a forbidden one, a flame that burned too bright and too fierce. And in the end, it consumed us both. Oh, I know. The curse was born of Nathaniel's rage and jealousy, a twisted magic that would bind our souls for eternity. But even in death, I fought against it, leaving clues for those who would come after, breadcrumbs to lead them to the truth. Not everyone. Hans, the truth is this. The curse can be broken, but only by an act of true love and sacrifice. Only by two hearts, bound by blood and destiny, willing to lay down their lives for each other. What? One. You were my heart, Victoria. My soul? And I know that one day our love will be reborn, stronger and purer than ever before. I am mine, a new. I find me in the next life, my darling. Find me, and set us both free. Why? Forever yours? Roderickle. Samantha looked up from the journal tears streaming down her face. Damien's eyes met hers, a wealth of understanding and sorrow in their silver depths. It's us, he whispered, his voice raw with emotion. We're the ones the prophecy spoke of, the ones who can break the curse. And in that moment, Samantha knew it was true, knew that the love she felt for this man, this stranger who was not a stranger at all, was a love that had spanned lifetimes. A love that had been tested by fire and blood, by sorrow and sacrifice. A love that would be their salvation or their damnation. The ground beneath their feet began to tremble, the walls of the crypt cracking and crumbling around them. A wind whipped through the chamber, cold as the grave and sharp as a knife. And there, in the swirling darkness, a figure took shape. A woman in a gown of blood and shadows, her face a mask of eternal agony. Victoria Blackthorne, come to claim her final revenge. You cannot have him. She howled, her voice a symphony of rage and despair. He is mine now and forever. Anem Sidon. Damien stepped forward, his amulet glowing with an otherworldly light. No, Victoria. 
He was never yours, just as you were never his. He turned to Samantha, his hand outstretched, his eyes filled with a love that defied death itself. But we are each other's, now and always. Samantha took his hand, feeling the curse shatter around them like a pane of glass. A love so pure, so powerful, that even the darkness could not stand against it. And as the crypt collapsed in a maelstrom of dust and rubble, as Victoria's final scream echoed into oblivion, Samantha and Damien clung to each other, their hearts beating as one. The curse was broken, the past redeemed, and in the ruins of Ray House, a new future was born. A future written in the stars and sealed with a love that would never die. But even as they emerged into the moonlight, hand in hand and heart to heart, Samantha couldn't shake the feeling that their story was far from over. For in the shadows of the estate, a new evil stirred. An evil older and darker than the curse itself. And it hungered for the blood of the living and the souls of the lost.